Hey, it's Paul from HowToNetwork.com. So in this week's video, I wanted to talk about how to ace your interviews when you're going for an IT job. So you've got your certification, whatever it may be, you've applied for the job and you've been called for an interview. Now, this isn't for your technical interview. Normally that would either take place in a telephone or after your initial interview, which is going to see if you're suitable for the role. So the technical interview will cover another time. So you've got to the company, you're wearing obviously something smart, a nice suit, and not presentable. You've been greeted at the reception and you sat down and you've been interviewed and normally this will be with one two or three members of staff and what we're going to do is go through the most common interview questions you'll be asked how to prepare for them and how to answer the questions so you can represent yourself in a good light and hopefully be offered the job or be called back for the technical interview if you're going to have one so the first question now this is the icebreaker and they always do it just to get you relaxed and so they can be relaxed also because they can be nervous and what we'll do is just gently get ourselves into the interview scenario. So the first question is, tell me a bit about yourself. So you should be prepared for this. And it's just, as I said, it's an icebreaker and it's a chance for you to just relax and get into the tone of the interview. So you must prepare your answer in advance. And what you want to do is just talk a little bit about where you're from. And then generally it will be about your interests and hobbies. So you must be truthful here. Don't say you're uh, an expert skydiver because often what will happen is somebody will be sitting on your interview panel and they'll have the same interests and this has actually happened where somebody said they're very keen on parachuting when they weren't really and then one of the interviewers was actually um, interested in parachuting also and did parachuting on the weekends and they would come back and ask questions about oh what's your what height you jump from or what type of parachute you have and then you can't answer it so talk about your hobbies and interest if you like reading any sports you're interested in and what level if it's just you doing it for fun or you're seriously interested and then you will be um you may well be asked other questions like oh why do you do this or how did you first get into it again it's not so important uh, what you talk about but it's just the icebreaker as i said so number two why are you interested in this job or what prompted you to apply for the position now this reminds me of a time i was in starbucks as i often am in the uk where i am at the moment and then um, somebody was actually been interviewed for a job as a barista and the manager of starbucks there said well what prompted you to apply for the job and the guy said oh i just live across the road so I can have a lie in. Now, obviously be honest, but answers like that aren't going to really help you. What they're more looking for is, you know, you've read the job um, description, what's involved, and then um, they're looking for some sort of researched uh, answer as to why you're particularly interested. So talk about your career goals, your ambitions, what it is about the company that appealed to you. If it's something particular about the role, like you like working in a dynamic environment, something stressful, something where you have to learn a lot of new things if you're interested in interfacing with your uh, with customers or if it, or if you're more interested in learning coding security that kind of thing they just want to know that you're motivated and um, that will make them then more motivated to ask you more questions and possibly and hopefully at the end offer you the job number three what can you tell us about the company and um, what can you tell them about the company well obviously before you apply for the job and before you go for the interview you want to start doing some research into the company so the first uh, place to go is their website just read about what they're interested in what career uh, what particular sectors they service for example is it legal financial health fitness and wellness and uh, look at the company blog as well just look at the last year's worth of posts they probably only post maybe once a week or once a month look at their social media and then also do some further research into what others are saying about the company are there any forums about the company that kind of thing you really want to look at their mission statement their company history are there any notable people in the industry you won't generally have famous people but in even in IT there are people who you may well have heard of who've written lots of books or they're a famous person or they're invented something that kind of thing so look at the company the mission statements all that kind of thing uh, number four is tell us um, how you think you qualified for the role now there's other related questions to this which I'll come to later but again you must have read the job description and also research the company and then be honest about why you think you're qualified for the role now always be honest like I said because you're going to be grilled on other questions for example if you say you're very interested in IT security and penetration testing expect to be asked a question about this say oh what do you know about that what have you learned and if you stumble and falter on this then it just comes across that you're just um, exaggerating fibbing or even lying and then um, it's not going to represent you in a very good light question number five tell us about any mistakes you've made in the past at work there's other questions that are related to this but this is a trick question 
So what um, you shouldn't be coming back with um, some mistake you made that crashed the entire network and made the company look embarrassed or they got a fine, that kind of thing. You're more looking for silly mistakes you've made. And I'll give you an example of one I made. I was working at Cisco TAC years ago, helping a customer configure an access list. I had them on a call. I was configuring the access list and then I actually um, just made a mistake and I locked myself out of their router. So it's a silly mistake. We all laughed about it on the call and I actually talked them through how to let me back in. So this is the kind of thing you're looking at where hopefully it's a funny situation rather than something that um, you caused a serious problem. So number six, the question is something like, tell us about any weaknesses you have. Now, I always believe in being honest, but you don't want to undersell yourself. We've all got character flaws and we might get stressed or sometimes fall out with people, even at work. We don't really want to get into any confrontation. So you want to avoid stock things like um, I'm a workaholic because everyone knows you're probably not a workaholic. But um, think about something that is a particular character trait you're working on. For example, um, you know, I, I find it hard to switch off when I finish from work, that kind of thing where it's it's something non-threatening or um, sometimes I'm, I'm just, um, I struggle to ask for help when I'm stuck in a situation. That kind of thing where it's a non-confrontational and it's not going to cause the company any problems. And hopefully the interviewers can relate to it like, oh yeah, that, ha that used to happen to me or that happens to me sometimes. So number seven, why should we hire you? This is almost always asked and you must have a well-prepared answer to give to the interviewers. Again, it must come across as genuine and that you're actually interested in the role. You could have had a hundred jobs that you've applied for and all of them you wanted to get a job with the company, but you've got to actually say why you're interested in this company and why should they hire you. Come up with something that's personal about yourself, like uh, I'm very hardworking, I'll represent your company in a professional way and I'm very um, eager to help you achieve the company goals. Again, refer to the website, for example, if they're looking to break into a new sector, hit a cer certain target, that kind of thing. Express that you've done your research and you're, you're generally keen to help them achieve this thing. Number eight, tell us about any time you've worked in a team. So sometimes in IT roles, especially for small companies, you may not be working in a team. However, you're part of a larger team in the company who are all trying to achieve the same kind of things. This doesn't have to be related to IT. If this is your first job, you could have worked in a sports team at school. Being a team now, even like a judo club, it's a team event and you could have helped take some warm ups. You could have volunteered anything. But you, if you haven't prepared your answer, then it's going to, um, again, <laughs> not look good for you. And you may, after the interview, have realised, oh yeah, I have got experience working in a team. So again, you must prepare properly and read up on what the um, company is is they're interested in and what their goal. Number nine, how do you keep your skills up to date? Now, some people have the attitude when they work for a company that the company should do give them all of their training, provide all their books, pay for all their exams. And certainly I've come across this situation before when I've interviewed people or I've had people training with my uh, website, howtonetwork.com, and they've said, oh, I have to cancel because my company won't pay anymore. Well, your success in IT is down to you. And if your company do help you in any way, then that's definitely a bonus. So you have to show here and the trick question is underneath the question is, am I, are you self-motivated? This is what they want to know. So explain that you buy books, you study, you um, are members of whatever Reddit groups or forums for your particular branch of IT that you're interested in. Talk about certifications you've passed uh, and anything that you're studying for currently and things that you're achieving or want to achieve in the next 12 months, 18 months or up to two years, that kind of thing. Question number 10, are you flexible? Now, I've been asked this before when I interviewed for a large internet service provider stroke data center, and the question doesn't actually mean anything. Are you flexible? Well, what I think flexible means and what the interviewer thinks it means is two different things. I thought it meant, would you stay behind for half an hour if required? The person that I work for actually meant, can I cancel all, all my plans and work, come back to work at midnight and do some network configurations? So there was an argument that <laughs> took place then when I I was actually starting the job because he said I thought you said you're flexible two different things you basically want to see say yes of course I'm flexible and uh, I'm happy to you know help whenever it's needed but if you've got um, um, a partner or husband or wife at home and children and other responsibilities then you would need advance notice you know the answer is yes short um, but you would need more detail if you're suddenly required to go on call out or change your rota number 11 so this is a trick question 
often it's what are your salary expectations now a lot of the times on job posts they say salary between or from here to here depending on experience what you don't want to do is uh, give an answer here because you haven't been offered the job um, and you're not actually given a full briefing until during the interview or after as to what's expected of you are you on call is there a rota um, is there long hours all this kind of thing so you don't actually want to answer it so um, I I don't give an answer I'll say well I'm not actually sure at the moment and um, if it doesn't give a salary range in the job post you definitely don't want to give an answer so um, once when I was being given a telephone interview I was asked what kind of salary I'm looking for and I just blurted out something around $35,000 at the time it was years ago and the person interviewing me said well the job's actually offering 45 now I was lucky because that person was a former police officer and I was a former police officer and they actually uh, were recommended to call me by somebody else so this person was on my side imagine if you'd said around 35 and then you find out everyone else you're working with is being paid 45 you'd probably be quite angry so this is why we don't mention it also you may well be in a position to negotiate if you if you're needed urgently or you have some particular a skill that's important to the company for example it's a networking job but you've passed a project management uh, certification that's probably worth something extra to them so I've often found that I'm working for more money than the people I'm sitting next to doing exactly the same job number 12 can you hit the ground running now this is a bit of a red flag as far as I'm concerned because what it may well mean is you don't get any training you don't get any induction you just sit on the on your desk on the first day and you start dealing with tickets this is particularly problematic if you're in a customer facing role when I sat at my first day working for Cisco TAC um, I was told there was a live phone call there was a, a major network issue with a large customer and uh, I had to go onto the call with the IT manager the network manager the boss of the company and then um, fix this issue this isn't ideally what you want you would answer yes I, I can definitely hit the ground running you may want to ask them what exactly do you mean by that is there any induction period any training involved I've even worked for large internet service providers that um, run multi-million pound contracts, multi-million dollar contracts, and they have no documentation and no training for the engineers that come and work for them. So just, um, just bear that all that in mind. Number 13, how do you handle working under pressure? So you may well be working in a pressure environment. There could be service level agreements, SLAs to meet, targets. You could be dealing with stressed customers who've got a network outage. You could be in a really busy team that hands doing lots of calls so you need to think about an example of a time when you've worked under pressure how you've managed to prioritize what needs to be done delegate um, anything that needs to be delegated get other people involved again this could have been in a sporting team you could have military or law enforcement experience that kind of thing consider if this is what you want if you don't cope very well with stress then ask them some more questions about the role and because the worst thing is getting invited into a job you get there the first day and you realize you've made a big mistake number 14 what are your career goals so the wrong kind of answer is to try and be sarcastic and say to the, the person who's interviewing you oh I want to have your job in a couple of years it's probably not going to make them laugh and you probably won't get the job so talk about what your your goals are what they really want to know again is there's a question within the question are you going to come and leave us after three or six months after we've trained you and invested in you and show you how to do the job so just talk about the kind of things you're interested in and if you're not sure yet just be honest when I was interviewed for the police many years ago I said I want to spend my two years probation learning about the, the job I want to learn about crime and traffic detection this kind of thing and then I think I'll have more information and then um, during my career interview I'll discuss with my boss as to you know where I can be going in the next 12 number 15 do you have any questions for us so we started off with the icebreaker tell us about yourself this is the sandwich the uh, bread for your interview sandwich this is the last thing you'll be asked you need to prepare a couple of questions you you don't really want to show that you haven't prepared because you definitely should have prepared for the interview so don't be saying things like how much do I get when can I start and um, what's the job involved really you should have done all this research beforehand so you want to ask um, you know like what's the next steps that kind of thing and um, could you tell me a little bit more from the job description what did you mean about um, security shift work road to work that kind of thing just have one or two non-confrontational questions to ask just to show that you have prepared and you do know but you just want a little bit more information and um, you may well ask if it's a non-technical interview if there's going to be a technical interview and they will be able to answer that so this is
this is your chance to to get some more information all right so at the end of the interview um, after you've asked your questions uh, and answered and got some answers hopefully you will thank all the interviewers for their time look them all in the eye you may well uh, stand up and shake their hands and then you'll be escorted from the building so I'm going to in another video talk about how to answer technical IT questions but for now I hope that helps if it did help please give this video a thumbs up and a like uh, I'll answer any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you on the next video Thank you.